I want to thank Monsignor Andrew Teramita for joining us tonight. We always invite the retired priests of the area and anyone who doesn't have a parish come join us. So we're always grateful when you can join us tonight for our Mass. So what separates Catholics from other Christian denominations? I think we could come up with a list of many different things. Teachings on the saints, especially the Blessed Virgin Mary, the role of scripture and tradition, the papacy, the sacraments. These are often the most common sticking points between Catholics and other Christians, and we, we could spend hours discussing each one of them. But I think the one thing that is the most unique and the most radical is our belief in the Eucharist. On this Holy Thursday night, we recall the night that almost 2,000 years ago, when Jesus Christ celebrated the Last Supper with his apostles, he gave them and he gives to us the greatest gift that we have ever received or that we will ever receive, and that's the Eucharist. In the second reading from St. Paul, he says, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. And then he shares the words that Jesus used to institute the Eucharist at the Last Supper, the same words that we pray every time we gather for Mass in the Catholic Church. From that night in the upper room until now, the consistent teaching of the Catholic Church has been that Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity is truly present in the Eucharist. We have believed this from the first day up until now, that during Mass, through the power of the Holy Spirit, ordinary bread and wine are transformed into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. It's not a symbol, it's not a representation, it is truly Jesus, period. That's what the church has always taught and that what the church will always teach. Jesus instituted the Eucharist as his parting gift for his disciples so that they would always, he would always be with them to feed them and to nourish them spiritually and to make us more like him. While the second reading describes the institution of the Eucharist, we really have to go back to the Bread of Life discourse in John chapter 6 to understand the true presence that we believe in. In John chapter 6, the Bread of Life, Jesus taught the disciples of the importance of the Eucharist and what it was. He said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you do not have life within you. He doesn't just say it once, he says it five different times in John chapter 6. Jesus was not speaking symbolically here. He wasn't speaking in a parable. He was speaking very literally, and his disciples struggled to understand it. Many of his disciples listening struggled, and this is what the scripture says. It says, this saying is hard. Who can accept it? That's what they told Jesus when he, when he told him this teaching. And in John chapter 6, verse 66, Scripture tells us, as a result of this, many of his disciples left him and went and returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. They struggled to accept the belief in the Eucharist, and so they left. Do you realize that this is the only time, the only time in the entire Bible that someone leaves Jesus over one of his teachings? And that teaching is the Eucharist. Now, if Jesus was speaking figuratively, he would have, it would have called him back like, hey guys, I'm just joking, pause, time out, come on back. Just, just a parable, just a figure of speech, not really being serious. But instead, as the crowds who had been following him for years now abandon him because of his teaching on the Eucharist, he turns to the disciples and says, are you two going to leave? Imagine what, have, what would have happened if they would have said yes, if the disciples, if the apostles would have left. Imagine if they would have said, yeah, this is a tough teaching. I'm out of here. I don't get it. Do you realize that if they would have left, Jesus' entire plan of salvation would have been done? Jesus didn't have a backup plan. He didn't have like a, 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 a team B for the apostles on deck ready to go in case the original apostles left. That was it. He was relying on them that after his passion, death, and resurrection, that they would be the ones to go share the good news. And if they didn't, Christianity would have failed. But Jesus was willing to risk everything over one thing, and that was the Eucharist. That's when Peter makes that great, powerful profession of faith. He says, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. It was the teaching on the Eucharist which caused some of his disciples to leave Jesus. And 2,000 years later, it still remains difficult for some. In 2019, the Pew Research Center did a survey to find out what Catholics really believe about the Eucharist. 
And the results were staggering. The results actually were scary. 69% of Catholics believe that the bread and wine offered at Mass are only symbols of Jesus. 69%. 31% of Catholics believe in the church's teaching of transubstantiation, where the body and blood, the bread and the wine, are changed into the body and blood of Christ. Only one in three Catholics believe in the true presence of the Eucharist. And we wonder why mass attendance is the way that mass attendance is. As we celebrate Holy Thursday, we're invited to reflect on our belief in the Eucharist. When we come forward every mass and the minister presents the Eucharist as the body of Christ, they don't say the symbol representing Christ, the body of Christ. And we respond, amen, I believe. But do we truly mean it when we say it? Do we really believe that Jesus Christ is present in the Eucharist? Or do we struggle with our belief in the Eucharist? Are we part of the 69? Or are we part of the 31? If we're honest, some of us struggle with the teaching, just like the disciples in the sixth chapter of John. It looks like bread. It tastes like bread. It has what philosophers refer to as the accidents of bread and wine. But it is substantially changed into the body and blood of Christ. So why does Jesus make it so hard? Why doesn't he just make it so obvious that we just know that it's him? Why does he veil himself behind the bread and the wine? If he allowed us to see him in all of his glory, I don't think we could take it. I think we couldn't handle it. We would be overwhelmed. Imagine if the God who created everything, the world, the universe, life, revealed himself in all of his fullness to us. We would be overwhelmed. We would not be able to handle it. So that's why he veils himself to protect us. Look at the Old Testament. Whenever God interacted with people in the Old Testament, especially with Moses, he always veiled himself in a cloud. And whenever Moses was around him, he would, his face would radiate, even after God had veiled himself. So what do we do if we struggle, if we have doubts? I think there are two things. First, we can pray. I encourage you to go before Jesus in the Eucharist and make a simple prayer. I do believe, Lord, but help my unbelief. I also encourage everyone to prayerfully read the sixth chapter of John, the Bread of Life Discourse, where he gives his clear teaching on the Eucharist. I encourage everyone to spend time in our Adoration Chapel. I invite you to consider signing up for one hour a week to be with Jesus before the Eucharist. And second, I encourage you to study. I encourage you to pick up a book and read. Educate yourselves. There's all kinds of things you can read. There's Dr. Brant Petrie's book on Jesus and the Jewish roots of the Eucharist. There's Pope John Paul II's encyclical, really long, on the Eucharist. There's Pope Benedict's apostolic exhortation on the Eucharist. There's the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Do something. Read something. Educate yourself. Because if we stay at a elementary or high school students level of education, we're, we're going to have the same level of faith as well. The more we study and the more we pray, the more we will truly come to believe that Jesus is present in the Eucharist. And if we truly comprehend this mystery, it changes everything. If, Jesus is, if the Eucharist is Jesus, then we would never miss a Sunday Mass. If Jesus is in the Eucharist, then daily Mass would be packed. If Jesus is in the Eucharist, we would never be late for church, and we would never leave early, and we would be prepared to receive our God and our Savior. If Jesus is in the Eucharist, then every seat in the Adoration Chapel would be full around the clock. And if Jesus is in the Eucharist, that we would never unworthily receive Jesus without going to confession. The bottom line is this. If we don't want the Eucharist, then we don't want Jesus. And if we don't want the Jesus, then as Jesus said to his disciples, you too can leave. This is not some side belief that's not essential. The Eucharist is core to what it means to be Catholic. It is the source and the summit of our Catholic faith. One of the greatest advocates or proponents of our belief in the Eucharist was Archbishop Fulton Sheen. A few months before his death, he was asked in a television interview about who inspired him when it came to the Eucharist. He said it was an 11-year-old Chinese girl, and he recalled this story that her pastor had shared. When the communists had taken over China, they went to the girl's parish where the priest, the parish priest was celebrating mass, and they arrested him, and they put him under house arrest in his rectory. 
And then they went into the church and they destroyed it. They, they opened the tabernacle, they took the ciborium out, and they threw all the hosts on the ground, and then they stole the sacred vessels. And the young girl witnessed it all, but they didn't notice that she was there. So for the next 32 nights, in the middle of the night, she would sneak into the church and she would spend one hour praying before the host on the ground. And at the end of that hour, she would bend down and receive it with her tongue. Because back in those days, laity weren't allowed to touch the host. So she would receive it reverently with her tongue. On the last night, after praying for one hour, she actually bumped into something and the guards saw her and they killed her right there on the spot in the church. It was this 11-year-old girl living under communist regime that she risked it all and ultimately became a martyr for our faith because of the Eucharist. That girl was in the 31%. So as we celebrate the Eucharist on this Holy Thursday, we give thanks to God for the great gift that he gives us tonight and he gives us every day of the year. And we pray for the grace to strengthen our belief in the Eucharist. I do believe, Lord, help my unbelief.